Welcome back to OnSign TV Expert Tips. In this video, we'll demonstrate the Cafeteria app. As the name suggests, it's perfect for a school or work cafeteria, but it's far more than an app just for a cafeteria, as we'll explore later in this video. The Cafeteria app is useful for any context where you need to list information organized by days of the week and further by time of day. So here's a quick preview of the Cafeteria app. We can see several lists here for Monday, and in the background you see there's more for the other days of the week. Monday is segmented into three main columns, each with a list of entries. Three columns are displayed at once, but we can have more columns for the day, of course, which will show up on the next slide. You can see by the example how useful it is for a cafeteria with different meals and dishes. Off the top of my head, some other contexts are a health clinic or a hospital. They can list which doctors are on call each day of the week. A university can show which professors have their consultation hour or who works in which department. A conference can list the various workshops on the schedule. A gym can show their diverse classes and so on. Essentially, you can use this app for any information which is unique to each day of the week. This app is data feed enabled, so you'll need to create a data feed for it. Now that you saw the app and roughly how it works, let's build it step by step. We'll use the school cafeteria as our prime example. First, create a new app. The cafeteria app is listed in the menu boards and tables tab. This app requires a data feed as a source, so we need to make one if you don't have one already. If you're new to data feeds, check out our expert tips video to learn how to create and use a data feed. Here is where you'll link this app to a data feed. You can see that our app requires a data feed with three columns and one optional one. We'll now create a data feed with the following columns. Day of the week, meal name, menu contents, and the optional schedule column. So let's leave the app for now and create a new data feed with these columns in it. As always, with data feeds, you can create a manual data feed on the OnSign TV web account, or you can use an outside source like CVS, Google Sheets, and so on. We'll create one from scratch. Name it Cafeteria. Again, we need these columns. Three of these are type text, and one is number type. First column, day of the week. You can name it as you please, just make sure it's a column for numbers. The numbers in this column will represent the days of the week. One is for Sunday, two for Monday, three for Tuesday, and so on. Enter that information here as a note, so you or any new users don't lose track on how to use this column. The next column is meal name. This is a text field, and here we'll be putting the meal names, that is the names for our columns. The next column is Schedule. This is where the time for each meal goes in. In any other context, you can treat this as a subheading. It doesn't have to refer to time. As it is a text field, it can be anything you need. And again, it is optional. You can also freely delete this column if you don't need it. The final column is the menu. This is where the actual dishes on the menu go. Keep in mind, they must be divided by a comma. Now the grid of our data feed is ready, so let's fill out the first row. I want to make a cafeteria app for the Monday menu, so for Monday I'll enter 2. Up next is the meal name. Let's go with a standard menu, so the first in line here would be breakfast. In the schedule column, I'll specify the time breakfast is served at the cafeteria, so let's say 9 a.m. And under menu, I'll enter some breakfast items like french toast, fruits, cereal, don't forget to divide all these items with a comma. Once the entire matrix is filled, we now have a usable data feed. One quick note, the columns in the app will appear in this order, so in case you want to reorganize the order of their appearance, you'll do this in the data feed by simply dragging them around. Our data feed is ready, so let's jump back into the app. Select the data feed here. Make sure the columns are assigned correspondingly. This is where it really helps to have the columns of the data feed named the same way as in the app. If they are named differently, you need to be sure to assign the columns correctly. Then click Confirm. Our cafeteria app is now ready to use, but we can further customize the app. Here you can adjust the duration of each page in seconds. Note that per page, you'll see up to three columns of content. If you have more than three columns per day, they will come up on the next page. As with other apps, we can make it look more fun and personal by changing font, 
colors, background images, and so on to match your brand style. Of course, since there are more languages than just English out there, don't forget that you can customize the labels in your language as well by clicking the language tab and selecting your language. Everything here will be automatically translated, but be sure to double check and overwrite the default English where necessary. Lastly, by ticking this box, you have an option here to only show content for the current day of the week. Leave this blank to give everyone a preview for all the other days of the week. And there you have it, your cafeteria app is ready to go. The cafeteria app is of course ideal for any cafeteria, but you can use it in other contexts, as we said. For example, here's how it would look in a gym that offers different classes. So as you can see, this app is useful for many other purposes. So get creative and experiment and see how this can fit in with your business best. That's it for this expert tip. I'll see you in the next one.